And we're gonna do it only using this, only an angle grinder, this whole process. Hey guys, Brandon with Whiskey River, and I'm gonna teach you guys how to hang a Black Raven Connecticut on a 28C using only an angle grinder. If you haven't liked, subscribed, followed, feel free to go ahead and do that. We're starting with a flap disc. This is a 40 grit um, from Benchmark Abrasives. I really, really like that, an M18 cordless grinder with no guard uh, because we're only sanding. A Connecticut pattern Black Raven. A Whiskey River 28C curved heritage handle. And then a large red oak wedge. This is how I hang axes. This is how you guys should be hanging axes. It goes super fast. So yeah, we're gonna go through it. Ready? Throw your flap disc on your uh, angle grinder. And we're gonna do it only using this. Only an angle grinder. This whole process. So there's a lot of material to remove on this handle versus this head. Now, do do I mean a lot, a lot, like inches? Not that much, but we do make these oversized. These handles are oversized, so there is gonna be a decent amount of uh, material removal to get this to fit. We try to make them fit as many axes as we can, but it's usually better to have a, a bigger eye than a smaller eye on an axe handle, because you can't make wood. Because you can't make wood. Because you can't make wood. Once the wood's gone, you can't put it back, all right? So here we go, working in facets. For anybody who does sculpture, you know you gotta work in different facets. What you do on this side, you gotta do on this side. And you are mimicking back and forth until you can get the head on. Once you start getting the head on, you can fit it down. Here we go. strings in. Always tuck your strings in. Hey look, it's starting to fit. Look at that. It's starting to go in. So that's the first step. The first step is getting the head to hang. There you go. You can kind of see down in there. It's touching, see where it's not touching. You put the handle on, you look at where it's rubbing, and that's where you take it away.
We got no gaps in the bottom. It's actually looking pretty nice. Once we're at that point. <coughs> Starting to look like an axe. I know, actually. I wasn't paying attention. Anyway, we'll bang it off because that definitely is going on further than it was when it was the right side. Um, yeah, let's bang it off. Right side. Eyes are tapered in these, right guys? So the top's bigger than the bottom. That's why, you know, you're supposed to measure on the bottom of the eye to fit your head. So I like mine sitting like an inch above the uh, shoulder there, so I'm actually going to take more material. <laughs> Three good whales. I think that's where it's gonna seat. It's where it's gonna seat. All right, so actually, I'm gonna have to pull it off one more time. We gotta cut this uh, kerf longer because we did set it further down on the eye. So I'm gonna pull it off. this up. See that? That's a ninja shelf. If you are, if you score a piece of wood like this, where you scored the piece of wood, like if you did that on a two by four and you bent that two by four, where would it break? It would break there every single time. That is what a ninja shelf is. So get rid of that every time. Just get rid of it. Do not have it on your axe. So we're gonna touch that up right now. Okay, so now we are going to switch out our black disc for a cutoff wheel. And this cutoff wheel is gonna go on and we're gonna cut that kerf. where it gets a little, a little risky. <clears throat> so we know where that's gonna be. We're gonna mark on the top of the eye, okay? That shows, a, that shows us roughly where we can cut the handle off and then continue the curve cut down. All right, now we got the handle cut off. The top part, we're gonna cut the rest of the kerf. We're gonna cut the kerf down a little bit further. Actually, let's see. Let's see how far we want. It's a pretty tall eye on this guy. Whew. Okay, we got a 
turn the fan on. Why turn the fan on, Dad? Where's the fan? Fan sitting on the table here. Plug it in. Dead. Dead. Back in business. Back in business. <laughs> So, we got the curve cut. Let's keep the glue on it. We're gonna pull our cut off wheel off. Look back to our flat disc, 40 grit. Cut the fan so you can hear me. Right here. All right. So we got our hammer right here, right? Hammer side. Okay. Nice and tight. That's where we want it. Oh, wow. That's actually really, really close. I should not have cut it that low. But it's going to work. It's actually going to work. All right. So we've got our wedge, right? Our wedge is oversized of the eye. We're going to mark our wedge thick. And then we're going to sand down our wedge until it fits. All right, we're going to get our wedge started. And we're gonna get our hammer again. Wedges started, or wedges sunk in. Top of the eye. Look at that. We'll clean up the shoulder a little bit once we get that off. But now we just, this thing's super on there, super tight. So we're gonna go ahead and sand off that excess wedge and then uh, Clean it up a little bit, see what it looks like, and uh, yeah, we're on the home stretch, guys. We're not sanding it off. We're not sanding it off. Well, that worked well. We're gonna uh, cut off the wheel on. Just cut that wedge off. Back to the sander. Nice. Nice tight hang there. Look at that. Goes all the way up into the Front, we got a little gap in the front there on the bottom, but I don't think that's gonna affect it. And uh, especially for what we got next for this ax. I'm gonna clean up the shoulder just a little bit more. 
So for all of the folks who uh, complain that we don't uh, like, hey, I don't have a big, I don't have tools, I don't have, I don't know how to do this. It's like, here you go, right here, angle grinder. You guys could do this with a rock and a, and a uh, pocket knife if you wanted. So there we have it. This is a finished palms well. That's how I like to round it over like that. Black Raven, Connecticut. Hung with a hickory handle, 20C, white oak wedge. There we go, guys. It's that simple. It's that simple. Use what you got. In this case, I have an angle grinder, and uh, yeah, we don't have. You don't have to have a draw knife. You don't have to have some fancy vise. You don't have to have uh, a two by seventy-two. You don't have to have. Uh, you don't have to have any of these uh, a Shinto rasp. All of that. Use what you got. You might not have an angle grinder, and then you, and you might have a Shinto rasp, or you might have a draw knife, but. Like pretty much anybody, if you have a service truck or you have a, you have a, you work for a job that has a shop, probably have one of these. Um, they probably have a lot of tools and there's lots of ways to hang an ax. And you're gonna be seeing a lot more come out of this Black Raven in our Black Raven series as we uh, mess around with this ax, see what we think. And uh, eventually it's gonna be up available, I think. For, uh, for auction on our auction site, but I hope that this has helped you learn more and more about how to hang an ax the right way or the wrong way. Oh yeah, leave a comment below. Let us know what you think. Let us know if you've ever hung an ax with an angle grinder or a grinder or your unconventional way of hanging an ax. I know plenty of folks who have used this tool right here to hang an ax and uh, yeah, I'd love to hear from you. If there's a other way, or if there's a secret way that you know about, drop in the comments and uh, I'd love to hear it. So until next time, I'm Brandon Roos with Whiskey River Art and Trading. This is a Black Raven on our 20C handle. And uh, be good, wave to your neighbor, help your neighbor, and uh, I hope your firewood pile is growing. Be good guys.